The Vladov Corporation is responsible for some of the highest fire rate weapons in Borderlands history, but which Vladov weapon is the best of all time? It's a top 10 list. Do we really need to say we're starting with 10? Starting us off at number 10 is the Infinity Pistol in Borderlands 2, and I know that this one will immediately make some of you guys want to click off the video because you think this thing should be higher on the list, but please hear me out for just a second. The Infinity is actually a bit weaker than some purple Vladov pistols, but you don't need to reload it. Also, since it shoots in the shape of an Infinity symbol, the accuracy leaves a little bit to be desired from medium to long range but in the hands of zero using one shot one kill a sheriff's badge and a stalker class mod you can turn the infinity into a very powerful mob shredding tool the infinity was good on all the other characters too but really zero got the absolute best use out of it the infinity pistol drops from doc mercy in the three horns valley but it can also drop at a slightly higher rate from lieutenant angvar in the burrows inside the commander lilith dlc additionally it can also drop from tubby enemies especially tubby bones in the Tiny Tina's Assault and Dragon Keep DLC. So yeah, there's lots of different ways to obtain this one. Not a bad start. Now let's see number nine. Sliding into number nine is The Machine from Borderlands, the pre-sequel. You guys are probably getting tired of me talking about The Machine and some of these other pre-sequel guns, but I love this gun. This blue rarity sniper was one of my all-time favorite weapons to come from the pre-sequel. The longer you hold the trigger, the more damage you do, up to 100% damage bonus. And the thing that makes this gun so strong and so much fun is also the reason it ranks near the bottom of this list. You will run out of ammo fast on this thing. So I tend to use it as a boss destroyer, but honestly, any enemy that you want to instantly delete use this thing it's fun it goes burr it's the machine you can find the machine in vending machines or by using the grinder to make one with the right formula see lootlemon.com for more information on that don't hate it's number eight and number eight is the liuda from borderlands 2 or luda i'm not sure how to pronounce this i've been told by russian viewers that it's luda but i've always said liuda so i'm going with liuda one of the best sniper rifles in the game in borderlands 2 the liuda features multiple elemental options insanely high fire rate and decent ammo capacity making this a great tool in any vault hunter's arsenal obtainable from gettle and the dust on borderlands 2 it's also extremely easy to obtain and get multiple variants of the only real downside to the Borderlands 2 version is the ammo consumption yet again. You go through it fast on snipers in Borderlands 2 and there's no easy way to regen or grab ammo during most fights. The Borderlands 3 version, however, is equally strong compared to its predecessor thanks to three separate buffs that it got over time in Borderlands 3 and you can utilize things like the cut purse artifact to quickly steal ammo from enemies. Then there's also Zane's clone act of 30% ammo regen anointment and basically the entirety of Moses' green tree to help her constantly regenerate ammo. There's also terror anointment that will allow you to regenerate ammo on Amara and Flak if you want to use this on them as well. The Borderlands 3 version can world drop or be obtained by killing tremendous wrecks at the end of the Cistern of Slaughter. You can also get it by doing the zero targets of opportunity. So both the Borderlands 2 and the Borderlands 3 versions are a tie for this spot in my opinion. But if you've played both games and you've used both of these, let me know which one you think is better down in the comments below. On to lucky number seven. Coming in at number seven is the Boom Sickle from Borderlands 3. Now the Sickle is a Vladoff Assault rifle in borderlands 3 but it doesn't have a normal assault rifle barrel only the underbarrel shotgun attachment now even though it behaves like a shotgun it uses assault rifle ammo which is far more plentiful than shotgun ammo giving you a chance to output much more damage overall now getting the boom sickle variant used to be extremely hard but a while back gearbox added a bunch of really good drops into the loot pools of the true trials bosses and as such the sickle ended up in the tink of cunning's loot pool when you take them on on true trials difficulty. The other bonus to farming it from the Tink of Cunning is that there is a 50% chance that you get it from that boss. Also, you can get two at the same time from that boss because he can drop either the Sickle or the Skull Masher, both of those together, or two of either of them by themselves. Now, you can also fight the Anointed X4 in the Anvil by doing the side mission Malevolent Practice that you get from Hammerlock, and that's probably a faster, more direct route. However, getting that almost guaranteed drop from from the Tink of Cunning is really good. Now your odds of getting this in the Boom Sickle variant are very slim. Every time a Boom Sickle drops, it is an 8.3% chance that that one that dropped will be a Boom Sickle. And like I said, it's only a 15% drop chance from the Anointed X4. So you are better off farming the Tink of Cunning on True Trials. It's just gonna take a lot longer. And now for number six. Coming in at number six is the Rapier from Borderlands 2. Now this one might be a bit of a hot take to include, especially a ahead of some of these beastly weapons that I just now described, but this thing was wild in Borderlands 2. As an assault rifle, it's not 
spectacular, yeah, it's okay. But its main purpose was to stab people. And if you're lucky, slag them first. So like most mission rewards in Borderlands 2, you're going to want to farm this thing by using the cloud save farming on console or read only farming on PC to make sure you get yourself a slag version of this thing. I'll put links for both of those guides in the description below so you learn how to do those different farming techniques. Now, what made the rapier so good was it did 200% melee damage. That's the highest of all the items in the game for melee damage. And all you have to do is hold this thing in your hand and stab people. And if you're doing any kind of melee build, this is going to give you some crazy damage. Now, the overall parts on this thing aren't super important. Like I said, I would do a slag version so you can slag enemies, then stab them so they take extra damage personally. And the cool thing about this thing is you can farm it on normal mode, then farm it again on true honor mode, then get it again on ultimate mode then you can even reset ultimate mode to keep farming it again if you wanted to but then you have to replay the story again so that's up to you if you want to do that now to get this thing you have to do the message in a bottle in haters folly you just grab that thing follow the directions and then you will dig up a thing and what you want to do is before you open up the chest you want to back up your save and then do your read only farm or your cloud save farm until you get the one you want then make sure you turn off your cloud save or turn off your read only after you get the one that you want number five Coming in at number five is the Monarch from Borderlands 3. Now, this might be a shock to some of you all that I put this a little bit lower than some of the other items that I'm about to describe to you guys here in a moment. But what makes the Monarch so good is its insane fire rate and also being able to switch it into bipod mode to output insane damage, especially on flak and that's the main problem with this gun in my opinion it's great on flak especially a fadeaway flak where you're utilizing the skills where you're just holding still and just wailing on enemies while you're in fadeaway but on the other characters it's great it's just not something that i would bother with on zane you definitely don't want to use this thing because bipod mode means you can't run and when zane's not running he's not doing damage on amara it's okay but she has far better options for most situations and on moe's again flipper is king on moe's flipper is so good on her so you can use the monarch and the monarch can absolutely do some fun stuff with minesweeper on mose but ultimately this is a flak weapon if it was great if it was like exceptional on all the other vault hunters this thing would probably be number two on this list maybe even number one but i have to keep it down a little bit lower because of that you can get this thing at a 16.5 percent drop chance from kilovolt when you're playing on mayhem six or above and then you can also get this from the sarah of supremacy on true trials at a 50 percent drop chance Number four! Probably the hottest take on this list is the Lucian's Call. That's right. I'm putting the Lucian's Call above the Boomsicle and above the Monarch. I know some people are going to be mad about this, but hear me out. I love this gun. I love this gun on every single Vault Hunter. It feels good. It sounds good when you're hitting crits and it makes that noise. And it's just a great assault rifle. It's probably one of the best assault rifles in the history of the franchise, if we're being completely honest. The Lucian's Call comes in three different elements you can get it in fire corrosive or cryo that covers basically the gambit of things that you're going to need it would be nice if you could like have one that does shock or radiation for shields but ultimately you're not going to have too much trouble ripping anything down with this thing now this thing has gone through some nice buffs over the years it's been buffed twice since launch both times increasing the weapon damage and this thing is just a fun gun to use now to get the lucian's call the easiest way is to go collect ludograms from from Dinklebot in Skywell 27. You can do that on normal mode with no mayhem. It doesn't matter. Kill Dinklebot as fast as possible. Take his ludograms. You want to collect, you know, 10, 15, 20 of them. It's a real fast farm to get those ludograms from him, especially if you're doing it on normal mode. Then switch your game to Mayhem 10, Mayhem 11, either way. Go to Sanctuary, go to the Crazy Earl door, and turn in all those ludograms, and he will puke out a bunch of Lucian's calls and possibly even some butchers. It's like one of the easiest easiest ways to get two of the best guns in the game and it's so easy to get them Lucian's call is just S tier. Now there is another way to get the Lucian's call, but it's so astronomically stupid to even suggest that you would do this. However, I'm going to tell you anyhow, you can go farm blue fire from the slaughter star map. And here's the thing. Blue fire is going to throw your Lucian's call down into a pit as soon as you kill him. Now, if you got your lost loot machine turned on by having your game set to cooperative mode, then you can go to the lost loot machine and recollect this. However, again, just turn in ludograms. It's so much easier. 
And now we're down to number three. And number three is the Boogeyman. Now, this one might be a bit of a surprise to some of you guys who have never done arms race. Think of the Boogeyman as the Lyuda, but it also has the effects of the Soul Render. Does that make sense? While shooting this gun, it will shoot out homing laser projectiles that deal the weapon element splash damage, according to lootlemon.com. It has about a 60% chance to not consume ammo. So this thing is like the Soul Render, the Butcher, and the Lyuda wrapped into one gun. It is so good. Now, this thing on a kill has a chance to spawn a boogeyman skull. It'll be like a pink skull that floats around and tracks down enemies. Once that boogeyman tracks down an enemy, it explodes dealing grenade damage to that enemy. Now, if there are other enemies nearby, that boogeyman skull can continue to respawn and hit other enemies, meaning that you can like wipe out an entire map really quick with this gun. It's just a really fun sniper rifle to use. Now, back to that whole arms race thing. <laughs> Unfortunately, the problem with this gun is you have to do arms race to get it. Now, I think you can also get this thing from the diamond loot room, but that requires you to have diamond keys and not a lot of players have diamond keys just laying around all willy nilly. So if you want to get this from arms race, then all you have to do is you want to beeline for this chest right here on the map and hope that it pops from one of these two chests. If not, go straight to heavyweight Harker, or if you see some drop zones along the way, make sure you check the vendors and make sure you check the chest and you can occasionally get this even from badasses as world drops inside of arms race but the quickest and fastest way is to beeline for the chest that it can spawn from and then kill heavyweight harker and hope that you get it from one of those two spots if you don't go refill your ammo come back into arms race rinse repeat till you do get it number two Coming in at number two is the light show. And I just recently finally got a God roll light show on my Zane. If you want to check that video out, it's linked in the card at the top of the screen. Now, what makes the light show so good? Now, you guys remember the infinity at number 10? Well, the light show is like the infinity, but better. And I know that sounds crazy, but hear me out. In the hands of Zane, you can use mana focus and you can increase your accuracy and you can make this thing almost into like a laser beam. You don't have to worry about that widespread that a lot of players have to deal with when you're using this on Zane. Shoots crazy fast, available in every element or non-elemental. And with Zane, you can do the clone active ammo regen anointment, and that makes this into an infinity pistol. You can shoot this thing almost forever. It's really, really strong. Now that said, I love the light show on all my characters. On Amara, it's great. On Flak, it's great. On Moe's, it's great. It doesn't matter. You can use this gun on everybody and it's going to be good. It's just, it excels in the hands of Zane. Now to get the light show, you want to farm Lazo Dactyl over in the Obsidian Forest map. Lazodactyl is located in this cave right here and has a 33% chance to drop this gun. So the drop rate itself is good, but it's only a 1 in 1500 chance to get the god roll on this thing because you need, I think it's five different parts that you have to get perfect on this thing and each one of those has multiple variations that said you don't need a god roll like most guns in borderlands 3 if you have a decent roll then you are good to go you don't need god rolls but this gun is absolutely worth getting in multiple elements and on every character honorable mention my honorable mentions go to the dowsing rod the super shredder fire the ion cannon the kick charger the magnificent the miscreant the hail in borderlands 2 the kitten and the lead storm in borderlands 2 the ice cream the long nail and old painful in the pre-sequel number one finally at number one is the back burner now this rocket launcher is basically the borderlands 2 norfleet but it's actually obtainable now i know that sounds condescending but anybody that's played borderlands 2 knows that it is near impossible to farm the norfleet if you're zero sure you can kill hyperius over and over again and hope that he drops the norfleet but it's a 1.67 percent drop chance on a raid boss kill then there's vermivorous oh man and if you want to farm Vermivers for a Norfleet, guess what? It's a 20% drop chance. But here's the problem. He shares that loot pool with the Nasty Surprise, the Legendary Berserker class mod, the Legendary Hunter class mod, Legendary Soldier class mod, Legendary Siren class mod, Legendary Psycho class mod, the Legendary Macromancer class mod. Also, he has skins in this loot pool that can take the drop. It really sucks. Now, what made the Norfleet so good was that it shot out three plasma projectiles that explode on impact, dealing elemental rocket damage. Now, listen to what the back burner does. The back burner shoots out a single
energy orb in a straight trajectory that creates a singularity on explosion and it sends out five smaller orbs that erupt out of the impact area and explode on impact dealing weapon element splash damage so even more orbs than norfleet crazy damage hyper focus where you actually want it to go this thing is a beast now is the norfleet better eh, maybe <laughs> however the back burner is what we got in borderlands 3 we never did get a norfleet in borderlands 3 but this thing it'll make you kind of forget about the norfleet sometimes to be honest with you guys and if you want to do something like what we did on borderlands 2 with sham fleeting there's something like that in borderlands 3 as well if you have a shock back burner and you put on the transformer shield then when you shoot your back burner even at your own feet you're going to regenerate your rocket ammo and not take damage from it same thing if you put on the red suit shield and use a radiation back burner you would be resistant to your own damage doing that as well now here's the thing to get the back burner it is so much easier so much easier than it is to get the north fleet the back burner has a 6.9 percent chance to drop from the agonizer 9000 on mayhem 6 and above or you can go to the true trials tyrant of instinct and you have a 50 percent chance to get it to drop from them and again just like we talked about before you could get two back burners in one run or you could get his other drop which is the tizzy which is also crazy strong so the tyrant of instinct is a great farm for some great weapons and the back burner in my opinion is the best of the bunch in terms of vlad off weapons but let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below what is your favorite vlad off weapon of all time thank you guys for watching i'll see you in the next one take care